Hi, I'm vocalist Julianne Kachaki, and tonight, you're in for a treat. We're going to take an inside look at the Toronto jazz scene with James B. and the Jazz FM Jazz Safaris. First stop is Dominion on Queen. We're now inside Dominion on Queen. And right now, before the Jazz Safari bus gets here, we're going to meet the players, because a lot of these players actually play in my band. So let's take advantage of that and go up and say hello. Inside, we have Big Rude Jake. Like a Hello. <laughs> we have Glenn Anderson. Hi there. We have Allison Young and Jack Zawaski. Hi. Fabulous, Mr. James B. here on the Jazz Safaris. Hello. Hello. Hey. <laughs> James B, I have to say, was absolutely instrumental. When I was here studying and getting introduced to the city again, the jazz safaris were absolutely instrumental in helping me learn the city again, because I was gone for like 10, 15 years. So I have to thank you for that, if you don't already know that. Well, <laughs> one great thing about the jazz safari is very often, almost every week, somebody says, I can't make it, please invite a jazz musician. Please bring someone who can't afford or who wouldn't normally go and show them the city. So I constantly like to take singers and musicians out on the town, so so they, especially if they're from out of town. And when you came here, it's a pleasure to show you the city. There's a lot to do here, but you kind of have to make your own work. You do, you do, absolutely. But there's a lot, there's a lot of small venues in the city, and tonight we're going to see three or four of them. Hi, I'm vocalist Julianne Kachaki, and we are at Perro Restaurant, and I have Archie Aline here, and we are on the Jazz Safari. But we always look forward to having uh, the bus safari coming in along with James B because uh, you know Jazz FM is the greatest supporter that we have of jazz music here in the whole country, in Canada as a whole, you know. And James always brings in these new people that really need to be exposed to the music because they don't come out that often and they need to get out and they should come out just a little more. And especially when they come to Perils because it's a cultural experience for them. Tell us about the influence that Bill King has had on you. I came into this project with Brian Dickinson, Mark Kelso, and Rob Pilch. And I was like, I'm using these guys. I know them actually from way back in the theater days. We did Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat with Donny Osmond. We toured all over the United States and Canada for probably three and a half years together. And I knew that if I was going to do something, Brian Dickinson, I knew from the Mont Tremblant Jazz Festival. He played with me there. And I knew that if I ever, you know, as soon as I made the next project, those guys were definitely going to be on my album. So when I met Bill, I also met, uh, I, he was also working with another girlfriend of mine, Jose Josephine Bundo. And Rob Pilch actually suggested to me, I think you should maybe look at a producer. And it really took a lot of weight off me, which I thoroughly enjoyed at that point because I'm so used to being behind the scenes in front of the scenes and it allowed me to just really sit back and thoroughly enjoy watching the process of all of the musicians not having to worry about lining them up I already had the ones I wanted and it, it was it was very nice as far as the influence with him he allowed me to take a back seat which was really important for me and that's like the, the main thing that I have to thank him for I really like my album can you think of some of the other people that were instrumental in putting this whole thing together for you I wouldn't be able to do this plain and simple without my father support. Like it's just you know with a having a car accident again, you know, and losing my voice. It it's a financial blow, like nobody's business. It's just it puts you back, and there's a lot of making up to do. And I simply absolutely could not do it without him. And my friends and family are extremely supportive, uh, like yourself, <laughs> allowing us to come here to the Jewel. <laughs> um, it really it just you know like I said, all the stars are lining up and. Uh, it's really nice to have a support system, and my family's always been there for me. Da -da, ba -da, ba -da. You're doing nothing there, right? Until. Um, it, okay. That's like, what I'll, I'll sing it with you because it would be good for him to um, to actually play something because there's one lyric where it says, Start this yeah. jumble and slide me. So That's when we big, want him to show off a bit. You just yeah. want a big slide, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Whatever he feels like doing. Uh, Mike, could you just put her vocal into that one yeah. spot? Yeah. <laughs> She goes, stop the trombone sliding. What you do, like a little, little slide and figure there? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. We have JoJo. Let's see. 
you do a little, quick little but you know, it wouldn't have been a, you know, you would have just punched it in, but yeah, you know, but it it does keep things moving along, so it's great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's fun. Very nice to meet you. Thank, thank you, you so much Likewise. for putting on my CD. Thank and, uh, pleasure. I'll give you a copy when we're all finished. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Sorry. Eric Olaskio. <laughs> oh, come on. Roxy, take one. <laughs> Richard Underhill. Bradley Harder. <laughs> I'm just a dude. Oh, just came off the street. Yeah. Yeah. We already know Tyler. Tyler Urema. Roxy, right in Temple Key. Think of those autographs she'll sign. Good luck to you. Roxy, and, and she'll appear in a lavalier that goes all the way down to her waist. Here a ring, there a ring, everywhere a ring, a ring, but always in the best of taste. So it's best of taste. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Best of taste. But always in the best of taste. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Projection. <laughs> They're gonna wait outside in line to get to see Roxy. Tara, hello. Hello. Julie and you have a few things in common. It's funny, in life there are parallels, and you probably didn't know each other at the time when they were happening, but yeah. you get together and you find out there are similar things. What were some of those things? Uh, well, I've, I don't know Julianne very well, but uh, upon first meeting her, we ended up having discussion right away about the fact that we had both been in pretty bad car accidents and we're both singers. So we kind of hit it off on that mark. It was like, oh, wow, well, cheers. <laughs> and the timing for you couldn't have been much worse because somehow, some way, you stumbled across a pretty notable person who was trying to make your life very easy, but you kept complicating it <laughs> by doing all kinds of things. Well, you met Jeff Healy. I did, and I, I, I have to stop you. I don't think that he was necessarily trying to make my life easy. Um, I don't think anyone can do that for you, really. Um, but I did meet him, and uh, he heard me singing. I was 23 years old, um, and he sort of, you know, Jeff has been known for uh, upstarting people's careers and being very supportive of young artists or was known, rather. I still speak of him in present tense. Um, but, uh, you know, so he took note and, and liked my singing and my style and my rapport with the audience. And so, yeah, he, he had uh, in, introduced himself to me and said that he perhaps wanted to work with me, but I I had already taken took a job back home in Alberta. So I told him that, unfortunately, I was leaving town. Um, and he said, well, come back after the summer and we'll talk. And I actually got into my car accident uh, the first day of trying to drive from Toronto to Drumheller. I didn't even make it out of this province. Now, you end up back in Toronto. I did. Jeff, um, he called me up while I was sort of lying in bed recovering and offered me a job as the singer in his jazz band, the Jazz Wizards. So I accepted um, and agreed to do, I was looking at about a year's worth of physiotherapy ahead of me um, and he sort of said, no, just come and do it in Toronto and work with me and be in my band. And um, so it was, you know, it really got me going and gave me something to look forward to and to be happy about in a very, very dark time. Now, paralleling Julianne, you also are an independent artist. Mm -hmm. And that can be a tough row. Yeah. It's, it's like I just... You, if you're an independent artist, you kind of have to be a, a sadist. Was it a sadist or a masochist? I don't know which is which. It, you have to be one of them at least to be an independent artist because, um, I mean, unless you're you're born to money or, or whatnot, in my experience, I'm certainly not. I think it's probably one of the hardest things you could do. And so obviously you have to love what you're doing and you have some sort of fire passion inside of you that makes you do this thing that is so difficult and challenges you on a daily basis. Um, but if it's the only thing you can do when you wake up in the morning and you can't do anything else, then you have to do it. 